After over six months away, Gotham Knights burst back onto the scene last week in a big way. It brought some major news like the fact that the last gen versions of the game have been officially scrapped, that pre-orders are now open, and most importantly, we finally got to see what two of our playable characters, Nightwing and Red Hood, look like in-game thanks to a 13 minute demo narrated by the game director. After re-watching this video a thousand times, there's a lot to talk about. The game is set for release on October 25th, the 9 year anniversary of the studio's first title, Batman Arkham Origins. And this is the first time since the game's reveal back in 2020 that we're getting a guided gameplay demo. Now with everything that was shown off, there's one major aspect I want to discuss today. The open world of Gotham City. Being able to explore Gotham City is nothing new, but not counting the excellent LEGO rendition we got a few years ago, the last time we saw this iconic location was in Batman Arkham Knight way back in 2015. Now like I've said before, this is where Gotham Knights really sets itself apart in terms of game design. In the past, we've only been able to explore as Batman and the entire story took place over a single night. In Gotham Knights, there's four different characters to play as, each with their own unique ways to get around, and the game takes place over days and weeks in a city that the developers call living and breathing. Which brings us back to the gameplay demo. So let's see what the city looks like in practice. Belfry, got anything court related? Kicking things off on the traversal front, we see that Nightwing uses a glider called the Flying Trapeze to get across city blocks at a steady pace. Besides being a reference to his circus life upbringing, it's displayed that it seems to have a pretty consistent speed and it can be deployed quickly at any height when falling. There's been some discussion online about this mode of transportation. Some people pro gliders, some wanting a parkour system for the character, which I swear I had seen mentioned in an interview around the initial reveal. But either way, my opinion on the matter is that gliders usually are always a satisfying way to get around an open world, with recent AAA games like Horizon Forbidden West showing this tenfold. However, we never get to see it paired with the classic grapple mechanic in order to form a rhythm. The demo just shows the character going in a pretty straight line down the open world. Since we see grapple points popping up off buildings, and later Red Hood chains what is essentially two grapples together, it's likely that we can do it too, they just chose not to showcase it here. It's also possible that a boost upgrade or option will become available through playing. Either way, I'm always down for more gliders in games. Before we jump to Red Hood, I just want to remind everyone that Batgirl has the classic grapple, dive, and glide we all know and love, and that Robin can teleport thanks to hacking some Justice League technology. Also, every hero has access to their own bat bike that can be customized, which is present both in the old and in the new demos. In the new demo, the camera is much closer to the vehicle, but the player is engaged in a more guided section while chasing an enemy, so it's possible the camera will be further out like we've seen previously when just driving around the open world itself. At the end of the sequence, we see that Red Hood can chain grapples together and go right into his specific traversal ability, the Mystical Leap. The Mystical Leap ability of Jason just basically landing and leaping from air has definitely been the most talked about part regarding traversal since the demo came out. Now when it comes to mystical abilities, the character does have some history in this area, especially if you read Red Hood and the Outlaws during the New 52 era of that book. However, I was definitely taken aback at first seeing this technique. Now that I've had time to think on it, I'm always down for tweaking canon or existing things in the source material if it means fun gameplay. Gotham Knights is set in its own version of the DC Universe, so I'm open to new interpretations of these characters. Except for this haircut on Jason, like let my boy grow that hair out. I don't know what he's doing right there. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of these traversal methods down below, but it's time to move on to the city itself. Now it's clear from this screen grab here that Gotham's map is absolutely massive and looks to be the biggest game world we've had yet. I count over 11 different neighborhoods along with marked fast travel, story missions, and character markers, and a breakdown of crime in a specific neighborhood. Now size alone isn't what makes an open world special. Like we touched on earlier, it's all about how the world is designed. What purpose does the open world serve the gameplay? In a game like Spider-Man, the city's main purpose is to showcase the most important gameplay feature, web swinging. It's a different design focus than a game world like, say, Horizon Forbidden West, which is to have several different distinct NPCs and hub areas, along with tons of machines to fight. It's all about balance. Spider-Man's world is great because it doesn't get in your way. It lets you really feel like the character and it's populated. It gives the city some personality, and it makes it feel alive in a different way than Horizon's does. 
Gotham Knights developers have said multiple times that this world is living and breathing, but we didn't get a great sense of that here, because we were either high above the ground, racing through it quickly, or engaged in combat. Now we can only go off of what we've seen, but the city does seem to be pretty barren at points. Now there's a few factors to consider here. One, this could just be an older build of the game. You know, game development is not a straight line and things can always be polished. Two, this specific area of Red Hood combat takes place in Southside neighborhood near the bottom of the map, so maybe this area just has fewer pedestrians. And finally, crowd density is often dynamic in open world games like in Spider-Man, so you know, you never really know what you're gonna get when playing. It's not like Arkham City or Arkham Knight where the only NPCs in the open world are ones that want to fight you. These civilians do react to how you engage, and that does have to change based upon who you're playing as. Overall, I'm still really excited for Gotham Knights. I like the team over at Warner Bros. Games Montreal and trust their pedigree, both within the Bat world and what the team members worked on before this game. We know Gotham Knights is going to be shown off during Summer Games Fest next month, and that showing will be really important for the title going forward. Here's hoping for some open world Batgirl exploration and to see more areas of the city. It also appears as though Xbox has marketing rights for the game, so it's possible something shows up at their summer event too. Either way, October will be here before we know it, so let me know what you thought of this demo down below and what you want to see next. Anyway, until next time, be excellent to one another. I've got a uh, combat video to go edit now.